If James Bond had a virtual synthesizer installed in his car, it would be the Tela by Fours. Tela uses modal synthesis, a sibling of physical modeling, lush, deep, experimental sound. It's delivered through an innovative and hopefully intuitive new user interface that looks really cool. The tech is a bit nerdy, but it's very interesting and it might expand the palette of sounds you use in your composition. drawn to certain synth sounds. And it's not so much the new technology or the new methods of synthesizing that sound, it's the sounds themselves. When FM synthesis came out in the mid 80s, I just really liked the bass, the frequency range, the thickness of some of those sounds. So of course I was drawn to a Yamaha DX7. Years later, when there were virtual versions of FM synthesis, I just had to go get them and try them out. My exposure to physical modeling really started years ago with sculpture, which comes delivered in logic. Again, it was the sounds that attracted me to this. Understanding the underlying technology was important. How to strike a string, blow air over a bottle, tap on a piece of metal as your sound source just seemed intuitive to me. It made a lot of sense and I was interested in the results. Recently, Adam by Baby Audio looks like a modern version of physical modeling that does some really unique things. I haven't done much with it other than download the trial and work through the presets, but so far I'm really impressed. Now Tela from Fours, which is from Sweden, has even a new modern take on modal synthesis. And I'm not gonna describe all the details in this video of the technology and how that works. For that, you can get a link to the Fours website in the description or up above. But I will describe at a high level how it works, walk through some of the presets, and give you my thoughts on whether this is a game changer. When you first open Tela in your DAW, it's gonna come up with a default sound, which is a square wave, and it'll be on the component called Impulse. Sounds like this. But what you want to navigate to is the first tab here on the left, which is the Patch tab. So if you've opened this previously and you're not hearing that square wave, you can create new for creating a new patch. It comes with about 200 patches built in. You've got a page view on the left and a control view on the right, and it changes depending on what mode you're in. There's a patch mode, impulse, grain, tonality, contour, and space. And then at the bottom of the screen, you've got some similar controls. This first control is the mix between the noise from the grain and the mix of the impulse. And the one next to that is the overall volume. So let's just work our way through some of the controls here. All the controls on the right work by dragging up or down. You can see the numbers change. So if I got this square sound, and I change this, if I double click, I think it goes back to where it was, yes. Here you've got the uh, spread of the sound. You've got glide, which you can expand. You've got a uh, re-trigger, velocity, and the number of voices. So let's just jump over to the impulse. If I change the shape, it's gonna change what I hear. I can use blur. There's repeat, speed, even adjusting the curve. And then the tone you can adjust as well. Then over to the grain page, the density of the grain or noise that you're adding to the sound can be changed by dragging this up or down. So I have less grain, less noise. You can achieve that also by playing with the mix. If I increase the mix up to the more noisy side, I get more noise. And down I get more of the impulse. And you can change the shape of that noise and the tonality of that noise as well. 
You can only hear it if the density is up to a certain level. Now one object I forgot to mention here is the overall attack and release are controlled down here. So if I want a fast attack and a slow release, I shorten the release. I can do that, and that's on every page. Also on every page is an LFO. I can click on this icon up at the top here and switch to the LFO view, where I can control the parameters for, say, the noise through the LFO. So skipping to the next page, I've got tonality. The density of the tonality is controlled by this gap number. You see the lines get further apart or closer together. Something called bend. You've got the warp of the sound. These are just parameters for controlling the tonality. Here's the tune, how much uh, it is tuned together or apart. Then you've got offset and dampening. Then on the contour page, which is pretty interesting, you've got cut, almost like a frequency cut. You can see you get less lines with less cut. Something called tilt. The actual wave, there's a basic sine wave at first. You can change the wave, and depth, I think, has to do with this. Yeah, just how deep that sound plays. And then the last one is actually a, a reverb that they call space, and it's got things you would expect, mix, size of the reverb. have to increase the mix so we can hear it. The decay. There's a chorus, which functions just like you would expect a chorus to function. You don't hear it much on that particular sound. And the tonality of the reverb, right? You may not only want the reverb to affect certain frequencies, and that's where you're going to make those kind of changes. So that's just a quick overview. If you're like me, you might be thinking, do I need yet another virtual synth? And certainly you don't need more of the same, but I think this is different.
What synths you use, whether it's hardware or virtual synths, is really very much up to you. I think you should let your ears decide. Don't get too caught up in the hype around the technology. Now there's an ongoing debate about physical modeling synths and whether they will surpass sampled-based synthesizers, which have been popular since the 90s. The current thinking around physical modeling or modal synthesis is that it can anticipate more of the way we play those instruments than samples. Samples is strictly all about the number of samples, the quality of the sounds, the number of light layers and the playback controls. There's nothing predictive about it and there's nothing generative about it. Will physical modeling overtake sampled instruments? It remains to be seen. I'm not sponsored by Fours or any other software vendor. I was just interested in this, downloaded it and tried it out myself. If you have comments to share, opinions, I'd like to hear them. Put them in the comments section of this YouTube video. Click on the like button, consider subscribing. It helps promote my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.